What's up guys? Alicia here with Terra Drift. We're here in Austin by Lady Bird Lake on a very balmy January morning. I think it's like 78 degrees today. Um, not super sunny, but you know, it still seems like a really great day to go kayaking. Unfortunately, we live in a tiny house, which means we don't have a lot of extra space to store kayaks. We live in a city with a river, so that kind of has killed us just a little bit. We've rented kayaks here and there to go kayaking on the river, but just knowing that buying a kayak is so much more cost effective than constantly paying 20 to $40 to rent one for a couple of hours, I just can't do it. I can't do it, okay? I can't do it. We found ourselves a solution. <sighs> An inflatable kayak. Can I put it down? Yeah. It's kind of heavy. <laughs> so this inflatable kayak is from Amazon. It's like the cheapest one that you can find on Amazon. It's the Challenger K1. That's a one person kayak. We got two of them because there are two of us. It comes with a pump and it comes with a paddle. I am super stoked because there is a paddle in this box, a whole paddle. So we think this is gonna be a great solution for us because not only does it not take up that much room storage space wise, and we can leave it in our shed or a car or store it in some rain barrels outside, but this also works not only because we live in a tiny house, but we don't have a rack for our car. Uh, you know, the rails that you mount your kayak on, your bikes, your roof rack, whatever. We don't have one. Now we have mounted kayaks on our Prius before, but it's kind of a pain. We came up with a super cheap solution that involved pool noodles and ratchet straps, and it totally worked, but it was kind of a pain and you had to like jerry rig everything and it wasn't great. This means that we can leave them deflated, put them in our trunk, take them to our favorite put-in spot, inflate them on site, and when we're done, just let all the air out and take them back home no roof rack required. So let's inflate this thing. We're gonna take it out today and see how long it takes, how it handles, how we like it. So that whole process took just under 20 minutes. It took about 10 just to do the inflation. The rest was like getting it unfolded, trying to figure out where things went, uh, which nozzle we needed to inflate which bits, and how, to, how everything goes together. Um, so I think we can totally get it down to 10 minutes once we do it a few times and we know how they're all folded up together because we'll have put them away. And now that we know where all of the air fill holes are and all of that stuff, I think we should just be able to whip these things together in no time. Experience here. Okay, Let's start with how it performed. So these kayaks are not going to be as fast as your normal single piece kayak. Solid plastic, fiberglass, etc. This it's inflatable. It's just not going to be as fast. And it's not going to be quite as maneuverable. However, with the fin in the back, they do go fairly straight. Uh, they're they're going to wobble a little bit, but it's not bad. I have definitely kayaked in more difficult to navigate kayak. Some smooth bottomed kayaks that just like you're all over the place fishtailing. No, it wasn't like that at all. So the other thing is um, this kayak is pretty wide and so it's very stable on it's the water. Stable. So you don't have to worry about uh, falling over too much. As far as like comfort goes, um, the seats are comfortable. The backs come up fairly high and give you some some ability to lean backwards, which is nice, uh, but also sit up real straight. You know, it's it's nice and comfortable. I mean, it's inflatable. How could it not be squishy? I can see the material getting a little bit sweaty in the summer months when it's like really hot outside. Oh, yeah. Your back's probably gonna stick to it because it's basically like a vinyl, right? Wear a shirt or put like, pull a shirt over it so there's a cotton barrier um, or a synthetic barrier or something between your skin 
and the seat if you're going shirtless or you're like in a bikini or whatever. Yeah, so the straps on the side, you adjust those and you can make the seat lean back or more straight up um, depending on uh, kind of your, what, your preferred sitting position. Mm. Additionally, because you're almost sitting on top of the kayak uh, with the inflatable seat, if you're a little bit taller, you can deflate that. And just in general, you can deflate the back and the bottom depending on your preference. But also if you're super tall, you may not find this kayak terribly comfortable. Um, just because it's not super long in the front and also it gets narrower the closer you get to the nose. So your feet aren't gonna have a lot of room to stand up. Kind of what this thing is for to slide down in there, but it only really, you know, at max, if you turn it size sideways, gives your foot about that much room, which is about the same size as my foot with the shoe on, which is not huge. So I have a very average sized foot. So it can get a little bit cramped down there if you like to have your feet all the way into the front. As far as when you're finished kayaking goes, I would just carry a towel with you and leave it in your car um, to dry it off before you deflate it. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to go home and reflate it. Reflate it? Reflate. Reflate's a word now. <laughs> Reinflate it in order to air it out and get it all dry or it's probably gonna mildew at some point. Um, that's just a thing. So as far as the paddles go, this paddle that it comes with is very flimsy. Um, definitely not something I'm going to hang on to long term. Um, I think I'm probably going to replace these with something else. Uh, a lot of kayak paddles will uh, come apart so you can stow them um, in a compact fashion. So that shouldn't be something to worry about. Um, otherwise, it works. If you want to stick with this paddle, it's fine. It should hold up for a while. It's just not going to be as maybe fast moving you through the water. But I think the kayaks themselves should last for quite a while. Um, like I said, they come with patches, uh, four it looks like. So if it does spring a leak somewhere, you can fix it yourself to extend the life of the kayak. Personally, I really enjoyed myself. The only thing that was missing that you'll sometimes find on an inflatable kayak is like a cup holder. Um, no big deal, who cares? I stowed my water bottle down in the inside near my legs and that wasn't a big deal and I've never had a kayak with a cup holder before but sometimes you will find like a cup holder in inflatable kayaks and rafts so that's cool but I am actually really excited to travel with these not air travel of course but road trips there were several times in the last road trip we took from Austin to Alaska and back that I so wished that we had a kayak mm -hmm. am I right yep totally. I mean uh if you keep these in your trunk or the back of your car or whatever, uh, you can whip them out and inflate them when you camp next to a lake or if you're in a national park and there are some kayaking opportunities available. Um, I know, you know, I really would have loved to have one on the last road trip and uh, we didn't. So I guess we're going to have to go back and I would totally try to do a little bit of kayak camping with these too. There's not a ton of extra space, but you can totally stash more stuff back in the back mm -hmm. as well um, before you put the seat in and then just pop the seat out to get to it. The last thing I'll say is that these kayaks are rated for a max of 220 pounds so keep that in mind when you're purchasing them mm -hmm. and you know I mean if you're gonna get one of these if you are a larger person may or may not be a good fit for you but hey it's like $68 on Amazon so why not give it a try. There's also an Intex Challenger K2 or K2 Challenger or whatever that is built for two people. So if you want a two person kayak, you can get one of those two and we'll also put that in the description below. Yeah, check those out. The single and the tandem kayak links are both in the description. We'll put them in a pinned comment as well. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe. Also feel free to follow us on all of our social media channels, including Instagram and Facebook. Visit us online at terradrift.com where you'll find all sorts of content, including gear reviews, destinations, and sustainable travel tips and adventure. Feel free to share any questions in the comments below and wander on.